Hello. You can hear me okay? Yep. We're just getting up and running to launch live on YouTube. Awesome, we're live. I'm gonna give the host to, who's currently host? Is it Judy or? Hey Judy, can we get the host back? Oh, you have host, Annie. You should be good to go. Great. Thank you so much. Well, we got two minutes, but we're streaming on YouTube now, and I turned off the comments there, so all the interaction will happen here on uh, Zoom. Great. Thank you so much. And thank, thank you, you to those of you who've already joined us. We're going to give folks a couple minutes here to hop on before we dive into the strategic plan and the content for tonight. So we'll give folks one or two more minutes here. Um, we want to wait to a couple minutes after six. Um, I will say for anyone who's joining us already, if you're joining us on Zoom, that's fantastic. You can put any questions that you have in the Q&A. If you're joining us um, via a live stream, uh, we probably won't be able to answer your questions there, but we'll have our contact detail to share at the end of the presentation as well if you do have any follow-up questions after the session too. So thank you so much, and we'll give a couple minutes here for folks to join in. Once again, thank you so much for everyone who's joined us so far. I'm going to give us another minute here before we jump in to let folks join on the line.
All right, I'm going to kick us off for tonight. Thank you so much for everyone who's joined on the Zoom or are tuning in through one of the live streams. Um, my name is Annie Rose Favreau. I'm a manager with the firm Moss Adams, and I'm joined today by my colleagues Tammy and Mark, and we're going to be taking you through the draft Corona Narco Unified School District Strategic Plan. That's our goal for the, tonight. So um, without much further ado, I'm going to pass this over to Tammy to take us through some of the introductions here. Great. Thank you so much, Annie Rose. And we are very excited to be here with the community tonight. We've been really looking forward to having this opportunity to get your feedback on the content of the draft strategic plan. Uh, we can go ahead and go to the next slide. So as Annie Rose mentioned, um, tonight we are having a community open house to get feedback on the strategic plan that has um, been created so far through a variety of different input mechanisms, which I will be happy to cover in greater detail. But overall, the district is creating a new strategic plan that will guide its priorities and decisions over the next five years. And so we really want and value the community's input as part of this process to make sure that the plan is reflective of your needs, goals, desires, aspirations, and truly what you think the district should be doing to best serve its community. So tonight we'll spend a little bit of time walking you through the planning process that we've been through so far. Uh, and you are happy, we welcome any questions that you may have about that planning process. We did start this engagement uh, six months ago in January. And so uh, it has been a lengthy process that's involved a lot of input and we're excited for this to be another opportunity for that. And then we'll provide a high level overview of the content of the strategic plan. And that's where we really wanna make sure that there is an opportunity to provide input on the content and what you're seeing in the plan itself. And so one other point to make throughout this, um, this meeting, you'll be able to use the Q&A function, not the chat function in order to provide us with questions and we'll be verbally responding to those. Uh, and we're really looking forward to, to your comments. And so do not hesitate to use that function whenever you feel like it. Great, so the, there is a, a draft of the plan on the a webpage for the district. That uh, webpage also has an, a survey link and that survey is open for a few more days. And so everyone that is here tonight, if you're not able or if you don't feel comfortable sharing your input on the plan in this setting, we would encourage you and any others that you think would be interested and were not able to attend this evening to take a look at the plan at this link and also fill out that community input survey as well. Okay, so now I'm going to provide a high level overview of the planning process that we have been through over the last six months. So first, we're going to go over just a very high level view. What is a strategic plan? A strategic plan is really a roadmap to help guide the district's priorities and decisions over the next five years. So as things change, uh, as we all have all learned over the last year, we will need to adjust sort of how we, we work and how we operationalize ourselves in order to meet our goals. But I think that having these goals as a foundation of what are we really striving for? What are the things that are really important to us? Um, and so that's sort of the, the root of the strategic plan. And first and foremost, the strategic plan really re reiterates the organization's mission, vision, and values. When we came in, the district had really strong mission, vision, and value statements, but we did take this opportunity to reevaluate those and see if they were so reflective of what we needed to do to best serve our community and how we wanted to serve them. So there was some revisions to that mission vision, those mission vision and value statements. And that's really to make sure that we're staying up to date. We're being modern in terms of our approach and the values that we hold as an organization to serve the community. The next layer down, uh, sorry, is the strategic goals. Again, those are the high level overarching statements that guide what is the most important thing for the district to be able to accomplish? What do we need to do to truly be successful? And we use those goals as a decision-making framework as different opportunities and challenges present over, over again, a multi-year period. 
those goals can be really um, aspirational sometimes. And so we have also worked with uh, all these stakeholders to develop draft district-wide objectives, which essentially dictate sort of what are the activities that we're going to be able to work on in order to achieve these different goals. And then the most important facet I would say is district-wide performance measures. These performance measures are absolutely critical to the success of the strategic plan because they allow us to monitor how are we doing towards these goals? Are we on track to be able to achieve our goals? Are we on track in terms of accomplishing the different activities that are so key to the success of the strategic plan and to the district's success in serving its community? So it's a really great communication tool and accountability mechanism to make sure that the strategic plan that involved input from all of these stakeholders is really something that we're using in order to uh, guide the district's activities. So again, our approach to input, we had a three-pronged approach with the key, the three most important key stakeholders um, for the district. So we have students and families, district teachers and staff, and then of course the Board of Education. And so I'll give a little bit more detail about over the last six months how we've engaged each of these different groups. So students and families, that is those of you who are on the call today, I presume. Um, so we know that the district has had a, a number of different community engagement surveys over the last year or so as a result of the superintendent search and the COVID-19 response. And we were able to leverage the results of those surveys in order to inform in particular the mission, vision, and value statements, but also some of the goal areas as well. And so those, those were really critical and we did not want to inundate the community with additional uh, surveys at this point in time. And so we did find those, uh, those survey results to be very informative for this process. We also hosted meetings with the Parent Advisory Committee. And then uh, back in April, we conducted a community survey for input on, again, those revised mission, vision, and value statements. And then again, we're here looking for your feedback in this open house, and there is that public comment and survey on the, the draft plan via the district's webpage. And so we, again, would really encourage everyone to be able to provide input through these different mechanisms. District staff and teachers, we had a number of different work sessions with these groups. So we met with the management team quite a bit, both the, the sort of um, executive cabinet team, as well as extended management teams throughout the process, making sure that the, the terminology that we were using was correct, that their input was really heard and valued, and that we were able to workshop a lot of these ideas together. We also conducted a number of individual interviews and focus groups with management principals and association representatives to get their perspective on what is the district doing really well, what are the strengths that we can build on, and what are the, some of the challenges and opportunities that the district has at this point in time to serve its community. And we also conducted an all employee survey back in March and got a really great response rate um, to that. And so that was, that was great that we had so much input with that group. And then the last group I'll go over is the Board of Education. Our team conducted individual interviews with each member of the Board of Education. We conducted a work session um, on mission, vision, and values, and again, had another opportunity for them to provide individual feedback on those draft statements. Similarly, as we've been going through this draft development process, we've uh, provided opportunities for them to provide input on the strategic goals, objectives, and actions that we'll go over in greater detail tonight. And we recently had a work session just two nights ago um, with them to review the plan similar to this. So again, we have really wanted to have a breadth of input opportunities with these key stakeholders. We want to make sure that you know we are facilitating this process. This plan is yours. This plan belongs to the district and to the community. And so as people uh, engage in this process, our goal is to make sure that when you look at the plan, you see your needs reflected in that and you feel heard as part of this process. So I believe that is it. And if anyone has questions about our planning process, 
Again, feel free to put them in the Q&A. Uh, we'll be moderating that uh, throughout this, this meeting tonight. And otherwise, I can turn it over to Annie Rose to give a high-level overview of the plan itself. Great. Thanks so much, Tammy. And I haven't seen any questions come in so far, but as Tammy mentioned, please feel free to put that, them in the chat really at any point throughout this process so that we can answer those. Okay, so the next thing we wanted to do was give you an overview of what's actually in the plan. Like we said, there's a draft of this plan that's posted on the district's website now, so you can go in and see it in greater detail. But we wanted to walk you through sort of the main themes that we were seeing here and give you a sense of all the information that's actually in the plan and, and how we typically see districts use the plan. So the very first piece here is, um, as Tammy mentioned, we have mission, vision, and value statements. And these are really form the foundation of the rest of the plan. And so the vision statement is that big picture view of where do we want to be going in the future? What, what is the vision that we have for our students and for their success in the future? And so through this sort of iterative process, this is the vision statement that we came to, that our vision is that every student has the skills and resilience to thrive in a diverse global community. And some of this language may be familiar, the idea of thriving in a diverse global community that's been part of the CNUSD mission for a long time. But this is sort of a new way of looking at it and thinking really about this combination of skills and resilience. And when we're having conversations with staff and with parents, um, skills came up quite a bit, obviously. We want to make sure that our students are having the academic experience that we want for them so that they are learning, they are gaining skills that will prepare them for their next step forward into whether that's into a career, straight into a job, into college, whatever their future is, we want to make sure that they have the skills that they need to tackle those challenges. And then we also want to focus on this idea of resilience. How are we ensuring that our students feel supported, that they know that they can go out in the world and tackle challenges and have that internal sense of resilience and what can we do to really support that and build that as part of a school community. So that is the vision that sort of drives all of this work forward. The second piece here is our mission statement. And so this mission, this is how are we as a school district actually going to accomplish the vision that we've set out for ourselves. And so our mission is to provide high quality education to meet each student's academic, social, and emotional needs. And to accomplish this, we will employ well-trained staff, promote family and community involvement, and create a safe and supportive learning environment. When we were discussing this mission statement, it was very important that high quality education was first and foremost, the primary thing that you see here, that is our mission, so that we are supporting students in those, this variety of ways. And we also wanted to call out the people who are most critical to making this work successful. So that's our well-trained staff, that's our family, we know that is a really, really critical factor to student success. And then obviously the broader community that each of our schools and each of our students live within. And finally, uh, our value statements. These are values that we strive to live by. Every you know, member of district staff and leadership, these are values that we wanna bring into our work. Um, and they really speak to how do we wanna treat each other and what are our priorities as a group together? And so you'll see here, students first, that is the number one value. This idea that students' needs and safeties are, is always our first priority. And so we need to be centering students in every conversation that we have. There are many other um, values lifted, listed here, accountable, collaborative, inclusive, innovative, and aligned. And all of these are ones that really came up thematically when we were talking with large groups of people. And some of these are things that we know that we need to really commit to fully. So the idea of being accountable, that's something that came up quite a bit and saying, yes, we want to embrace that as a value. We want to be accountable to our community. We want to be transparent in our communication. And so you'll see a lot of what um, sort of the leadership team, but also um, the staff, these are the values that we heard from them. And these are values that we heard that the community is interested in seeing from members of the district. So those sort of form our foundational pieces here. And then we move on to goals. Now that we know where we're trying to go with our vision, what are the goals that we're gonna try to accomplish in order to get there? 
And there are four primary goal areas here. The first is academic excellence, and the second is student well being. These two are the most critical things that we heard again and again and again, pretty much in every single conversation, in every survey we put out. Academic excellence and then student well being were our number one and two priorities. And so you see that reflected here. We also have equity and effective governance listed. And in many ways, the work that we wanna do in each of these areas, it's almost like support work. What are all the things that we have to do internally as a district, as district staff and leadership, in order to make sure that our students have environments where they can reach academic excellence, where they can have a strong sense of well-being? What do we need to do on our end to create an environment where that can happen? So I'm going to go through each one of these areas and then talk a little bit more about the more specific objectives. What are the specific things that we're trying to get to when we say academic excellence? So the first one we have here, we have five areas listed here. Uh, and the first is the opportunity gap. And so this objective is really around saying, we wanna close the opportunity gap. We need to provide additional support to students who are not yet meeting academic standards. So that was a really key one. This came up in many, many conversations. And obviously over the past year, we know that different students have had different needs. And so really wanting to make sure that as we move the district forward, that that's really something that we're focused on. There's also the consistent student experience. And that speaks to this idea that we wanna make sure that no matter what school you are in in the district, that a student would have a certain level of consistent services available to them within those schools. And this, um, a multi-tiered system of support, really fully implementing that across the district is a major theme of this objective. We also heard quite a bit that while we want a certain set of consistent experiences, we also want flexibility, right? This past year has taught us quite a lot about how flexible we can be in different learning environments. And so we wanna to continue to build on what we've learned in this year and make sure that flexible learning options are available to our students to really best meet their individual needs. And then the last two here are, are again sort of support pieces. There's the technology piece. We want to be using education technology in the best possible way to enhance the academic experience. And finally, family engagement. We know that this is, again, very, very critical to ensuring that students have a positive academic experience. And so how can we continue the work to build and strengthen the relationship between parents and um, district staff? So that's academic excellence. The next one we have here is student well being. And there are two really critical ones listed here student mental health. How are we providing proactive mental health support and resources to our students? And then student safety. How are we creating a, a school environment and a school community that is very safe? Because we know if students don't have that sense of safety, that it becomes really, really difficult to focus on things like academics and, and being able to move forward in their lives. And so both of these are things that we think are critical to address in over the next five years and see how we can be building our resources around that. Then we have equity. And so equity, we know this is a sort of a buzzword in many ways. In this instance, when we're working with this particular district, equity can really be thought of as how are we ensuring that every student gets the resources that they need to succeed, right? We know that students have different needs. And so how are we ensuring that we're actually meeting those needs and meeting students where they are? In here, you'll see a lot of objectives that are around how are we making sure that our internal systems and processes and our employees really are designed in such a way so that we can provide an equitable school experience. And so some of this has to do with employee training, making sure, you know, can every employee in the district, do we have a shared understanding of what equity even means or what we want it to mean within this context? When we're looking at systems and processes, thinking how can we use research-based best practices to make sure that our systems are creating really equitable outcomes for our students? Employee representation is another one. We have a very diverse student body and we wanna make sure that our workforce can be reflective of that diversity. And 
finally, school curriculum and digital divide. So school curriculum is, again, focused on how are we bringing research-based best practices into the lens through which we are reviewing and updating our curriculum on a regular basis so that we can ensure that the curriculum is going to be inclusive for our students. And then finally, digital divide. This past year has taught us so much about how having an internet connection, having a laptop, having a device is really critical to the learning experience overall. And so um, we, we recognize that closing the digital divide is going to be a really critical piece of creating that really positive, strong academic experience. And I see there's some questions coming in. We'll get to them in one more minute. I have one last slide here. Um, so effective governance is our last area, our last goal area. And we had six really key objectives here. Uh, and again, these are all of the sort of backend stuff. What, do, what does the district leadership and management group have to do in order to ensure that we're functioning really effectively as an organization? So you'll see leadership collaboration is on here. We want to make sure that there's really good collaboration between the board and the administrative leadership and site-based management teams, so your principals and assistant principals and teachers and our association representatives. How are we really functioning together as a whole? Employee engagement, the district is an employer of choice and we want to continue to be an employer of choice. And so how, what are we doing in terms of professional development to make sure that employees are really engaged and valued? Financial stability is another one. How are we looking out for the long-term financial sustainability of the district? Community engagement, we spoke already a little bit about how engagement with families and parents are so, so important, but also thinking more broadly about how are we building a really good sense of trust and relationship with our broad community? Um, what are we doing in terms of communication and transparency? And then the last two are really about infrastructure, technology infrastructure. We've done, uh, the district's done a fantastic job of really expanding for example, the number of devices that students have out in the field, but how can we make sure that we're sustaining that over time and maintaining that in a really effective way? And then the last one is about the district's physical buildings. And again, that question of how can we make sure that the buildings are getting maintained and improved over time so that they can be a really great space for our students. So that was a lot of information. And I think we do have some questions that have come in. Tammy, would you be able to go over and review a couple of those? Absolutely. So thank you everyone for submitting uh, questions and comments so far. Please keep them coming. The first uh, comment that came in is about whether or not the district would be engaging in critical race theory and uh, asking questions about the, the different concepts of equity and equality. And I believe we should have a district representative on the line who's able to respond to that. Yeah, Evita, would that be a good question for you to answer? I uh, thank you. I'll take it from here. And we actually have um, Carlos Flores um, on the line with us, who's um, well equipped to answer this question. Carlos, um, if you could jump in, that'd be great. have lost Carlos. He, he might have gotten a disconnect here. I believe we need to make him a, a panelist. He's no longer listed as an attendee, so I think he might have gotten disconnected from the call. So how about we come back to this question? I know that it's really top of mind for a lot of folks. So let's see if we can get Carlos reconnected to the call, and then we'll come back to this one. Great. We have two comments about the virtual school and whether or not Moss Adams is involved in the virtual school. Any of those, I think either one of us could respond to that. So go yeah, ahead. Yeah, that's a great question. I would love if we were involved in virtual school, but we are not. No, we are just the outside facilitation group that was brought in to help facilitate the strategic planning process in and of itself. And so this is the type of work, our group does this type of work for, um, for dozens of uh, local cities, counties, school districts. We recently completed a strategic planning process with um, the city of Corona. And so we were absolutely thrilled to be able to come and work with the district here. But no, our focus is really primarily on how can we help you create and implement this type of strategic plan, but not on the virtual school side. Excellent, thank you. 
We have another question about the district's plan to hire a diverse workforce, which was listed as um, a goal area. And so I don't know if Avita, if you have any thoughts on that or any Rose, if you'd like to respond. I can probably kick us off and then Avita, if you have more to add there. Um, yes, this is one of the areas um, that came up quite a bit in conversation is really this understanding that I think I mentioned before, we have a really diverse student body uh, and we're not yet at the point where that diversity is fully reflected in our staff and we wish to get to that point. And so there's an activity that you'll see listed in uh, the strategic plan that speaks to this idea of creating, really looking at the data. What is the data telling us right now about um, what our workforce looks like in comparison to our students? And then putting together a plan so that we can um, make sure that as we hire new folks into the district that we are um, really reflective of our student body and our student population. And so that might that plan uh, will likely address things like recruitment practices, how are we getting the right people in the door, that type of thing, how are we making sure that our work environment is very welcoming and inclusive for folks from a variety of backgrounds. And so there's nothing in the plan yet that speaks to the very, very specific actions that will be taken besides saying, we know we need to do this work, we are going to be working with well, the HR, led by the HR department, that we will be doing work in this area and putting together a plan to move us forward there. Evita, is there anything else that you'd want to add to that? Um, I think I think you said it um, said it well. I think there's a strong commitment to um, to ensure that our workforce is diverse, and um, that is certainly um, what um, what emerged from from this planning process, and even prior to to embarking on the strategic plan process. And so that's been kind of a long term um, commitment that um, the district's HR department will be overseeing. Great, thank you both. And so it sounds like there's still more to come in terms of um, tactical strategies uh, on how to implement that as well. And it looks like Carlos has joined again. Do we want to circle back to the critical race theory comment? If we're able to have- There we go. Let's see, I, uh, I think I can allow Carlos to talk. So I'm going to do that now. Hi, Carlos, can you hear us okay? Yes, I can hear you. Great. Tammy, Tammy do you wanna reiterate that question? Cause we thought Carlos, you may be able to speak to some of this. Absolutely. So um, there was a comment about whether or not the district would be engaging in critical race theory and um, uh, whether or sort of understanding the difference between equity and equality. Uh, absolutely. Um, so the first answer around critical race theory is that um, in March, the State Board of Education approved a framework around ethnic studies. Um, and I believe some of the, the questions out there may be related to that. It is important to note that that uh, framework is an optional framework and resources for uh, school districts to use. Um, it is not a requirement. Uh, there are no, there's no intention to implement critical race theory um, in the Corona Oak Unified School District. And then the second question around really equity is this idea that, that the plan sort of touches on um, but it has been a longstanding uh, tradition and commitment in our district, which is to give uh, every student what they need uh, so that they can be successful. And there's a, there's a recognition within our district that students need different things um, across K through 12 to be successful. And so equity is really a mindset that recognizes that our kids have different needs. Um, they learn in different ways and we wanna ensure that um, they have um, those resources or programs to support them. Some examples of that would be like our AVID program that's really designed for first generation college students, middle, middle achieving students, if you will. Um, our career technical education programs, which are um, sort of a recognition that not all, not all students necessarily wanna to go to college or have the desire to, um, but have, have a desire to, to um, be successful outside of, of high school. So those are examples of equity in action. Um, as it relates to equality, um, you know, 
our desire in our district is to ensure that all of our students have equal opportunities, right? That they have access. And, and so that's really uh, the distinction and sort of the mindset. Our approach to um, moving towards um, equity is really our multi-tiered system of support which is a statewide national framework around um, responding to students' individual needs in a way that's systemic. And so uh, more information to come around our multi-tiered system of supports, but it's this idea that um, we have a strong tier one approach. All kids um, have strong first instruction. All kids have access to counselors and, and those types of services. And then some kids need more of that or less of that depending on their needs. Um, the last point I will touch is this idea that giving every kid what they need, uh, our definition of equity, is really rooted at the classroom level. Um, that's an expectation that we have for all of our teachers, that through differentiation, they meet the needs of, of all of their students. And so equity um, is not a new concept in our district, and it's really rooted in meeting the needs of our students. Great. Thank you so much for that. And just one clarifying question came in while you were speaking, Carlos. Um, just a, a clarification on whether any current high schools are actually offering critical race theory classes right now. Can you speak to that one? Correct. I can't speak to that. So th there are no uh, classrooms at the secondary level or at any level that include critical race theory as part of, of an adopted or approved curriculum. Um, I know uh, there, there is a high school, Eleanor Roosevelt High School, um, who does a social justice course um, that's really an English language arts 12th grade course that's an elective optional course for students to take. What that means is that students um, have an interest in taking this particular course. Um, and that course is um, currently. Uh, working through a um, classroom syllabus that we have, we, we, we've shared with a number of community members that really tackle issues around social justice related to gender, to class, to race. Um, it's rooted around the, based on the language arts literacy standards for 12th grade. So reading, writing, critical thinking, um, but it does not include critical race theory as, as a course outcome. Or, or course discussion topic. Great. And I'm seeing, thank you so much for that follow-up, Carlos. I'm seeing quite a few questions come in that are really directed at how are we thinking about equity and how are we including that as part of our hiring plans and how are we doing that in a way that's going to be fair rather than discriminatory. And so what I'm thinking will probably make the most sense because a lot of those questions won't be answered specifically by the strategic plan. But what I'm thinking is that we can put our contact information in the, um, in the Q&A. We can send that out to everyone on the line. And then if you have very specific questions about, for example, the workforce development work that will be happening, I think we could connect you directly to some, in that case, like the HR staff that will be managing that work. And they can probably answer in more detail um, some of these very specific questions about how some of the stuff that's outlined in the strategic plan will actually be implemented. So I know there's a couple of questions in here on that. Tammy, are there any other questions that aren't related to the workforce development piece? Yeah, there's a question about how the district um, will be able to provide the most optimal educational experience for each student, given that uh, we have uh, different gaps between student achievement right now. So how do we make sure that we're addressing um, students that need a little bit of extra help while still keeping a very strong performance um, for those um, students who are performing really well? And if, if I could jump in, this is Avita here. I'd like to, to pitch that question um, to Dr. Simon, um, who oversees our curriculum and instruction department, and she'd be able to answer um, more specifically to that uh, question. Okay. 
Thank you, Avita. Um, uh, thank you for the question. And uh, that's one of the areas in the strategic plan that um, we are uh, we have outlined um, with objectives and so on. And that is about really understanding every student's um, academic and wellness needs, um, and then providing the best educational experience for them. And one of the things we have learned. Um, you know, it's one of those things where, you, you know, we knew it, but then when we experienced it through the pandemic, and that is really being flexible and, and providing flexible opportunities for our students, understanding that um, our students um, have a lot of abilities, they have strengths um, and gifts, and also there are um, um, areas, uh, growth areas, along with gaps in their learning. So we know our students, um, some of our students have unfinished learning. Um, definitely that was um, uh, brought to our attention during the pandemic. And of course, we've had those, um, we've had that understanding even prior to the pandemic. So yes, we are looking at providing interventions and supports along with enrichments, targeting those areas of um, growth, and then also at the same time, providing the rigorous learning opportunities for our students. Because we want all of our students, every single one of our students to be stretched and to grow and show progress in their learning um, while they're here um, in CNUSD. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Dr. Simon. Okay, we have another question about class sizes um, as a potential barrier to student learning and academic achievement. Um, perhaps someone from the district would like to respond to um, how class sizes will impact that work. Uh, Annie, I apologize. Could you ask that question one more time, please? Sure. So we have a comment about um, how there is no mention of reducing class sizes in the strategic plan, yet we focus on academic achievement and sort of wanting to understand how we reconcile those two items. You know, that is a great question. And we um, have had conversations about uh, class size and, um, you know, can we do class size reduction? I can tell you that um, the district is looking really closely at that, at our numbers. And, um, and how we can support um, our students. Not only are we looking at the high schools, but the intermediate and elementary levels, there has been discussion about it. But um, at this point to specifics regarding, um, you know, the kind of like this blanket response of we are gonna reduce class size but by this number, we don't have that information at this time, but uh, um, the, uh, the administration um, is in, conversation about that because um, we do recognize um, that that is um, an area that our teachers value um, as well as our families and, and administrators as well. Um, but uh, at this point, um, what I can say is it's, uh, it's on our list. We are definitely taking it very seriously and we, we are working on it. And um, we know that it is a very important um, topic that um, we wanna make sure we continue to work through. Great. We have a question on whether there are plans to expand the dual language immersion program for Mandarin in particular. Thank you. Uh, I, and Carlos, I'll, I'll, I can start and if you want to jump in, Carlos is definitely our expert in this area. But I, I, what I will share is that we are excited about our Mandarin program and we are looking at growing it. Um, we look at numbers and what we do is we um, survey the community and um, look at um, incoming kin uh, students in TK and kindergarten and um, look at how we can add courses. Um, so those are things that we look at, um, not only for Mandarin, but Spanish. And so um, definitely that it is a priority of our board along with our superintendent um, to continue to grow dual language immersion and dual immersion. And um, so, yes, but with specifics on when, um, I'm gonna turn that over to Carlos and he can share a few more um, specifics with us. Absolutely, thank you, Lisa, for that. So I, I think you, um, you answered that question um, pretty comprehensively. The only thing I would add is remember that we want um, Mandarin immersion programs that are high quality. 
Um, it is the first Mandarin program in the county. Um, we spent a lot of time, a couple years actually studying high performing um, programs in Los Angeles County and Orange County. And what we, where we are right now with Rondo is the program is off to a good, good start. We have a strong uh, curriculum, which is not easy to find in Mandarin. Our teachers are building out some of those lessons and objectives over the next few months or the next few years. One of the one of the challenges before us is to ensure that we have high quality Mandarin speaking teachers. And so, uh, it, it is correct that it's it's um, a popular program, and we want to meet that interest of our community. But we also want to make sure that we have highly qualified Mandarin speaking teachers who can do the program in both English and Mandarin. And uh, that, that's, that's one of the opportunities we have right now uh, before we expand is just ensuring that we continue to build that pipeline of, of uh, Mandarin teachers. Excellent, thank you. And before either of you go anywhere, we have a question about whether other languages um, will also be expanded in the dual immersion program. I can start, Carlos. Uh, that is a great question. And funny enough, we were just having that conversation about we were looking at um, languages uh, across um, uh, languages that are being taught in uh, other school districts within um, our state. Um, nationally and internationally, and we were comparing numbers and uh, looking at, uh, you know, as we grow our program, do we want to incorporate other languages? What would that look like? So while we don't have a specific answer to next language we would um, uh, bring into the fold, we can tell you that it is um, dual immersion, dual language immersion is incredibly important to us. It is a priority of our board and we wanna make sure that we continue to, to grow the program and offer opportunities and really prepare our kids um, uh, as they leave um, CNUSD as graduates. We want them to be prepared for our world ahead of them. And so um, we understand this is incredibly important. And Carlos, if you wanted to add to that, um, please feel free to do so. Yeah, yeah, I, I think as it relates to the community's interest of, of a second language or, or foreign language acquisition, I think we're, we're really focused on our dual immersion program in Spanish, our one-way immersion program in Mandarin, and as it relates to other languages, um, that, that's certainly um, within the realm of possibility. I, I would say, though, that in the last few years, we've increased the number of seals of biliteracy from about 80, about five years ago, um, to over four, 485, almost 500 seals of biliteracy. And that's a recognition for students who speak more than one language. And we really expanded that um, beyond just Spanish to include French, Arabic, Vietnamese, Tagalog. Students are, are also getting that seal. So I think there's an opportunity to, to strengthen our foreign language programs at the high school. Um, um, but I, but I, I don't know for sure um, what another immersion program looks like at this point in time. Great. Well, I think we've gotten through most of the questions here. What I'm going to do is put my email address in the chat for everyone to be able to see. I think that this should work. Um, so I'm going to send that out now. And then if there's any questions that we have been able to answer or that we did touch on, but you want more details about, we'd be very happy to um, connect you with the appropriate CNUSD staff member who can provide additional um, details and some more information about some of the specific implementation elements of this plan. So I'm going to send that email out now. And then feel free to continue posting um, to the chat log. We only have a couple more slides to get through to really talk about how the plans were the next steps there. So if you have any other questions, feel free to continue putting them in the chat and we'll answer them in just a few minutes. Okay, so this will be an experiment to see whether that email address goes out to everybody, but I think it should. All right, so I'm going to bring us through here. We have 
just two more slides to really think about what are we actually going to do to implement the strategic plan or what does the next steps look like? This is a five-year plan. This, that's a very long period of time. It's very easy for that type of a plan to just sort of sit on a shelf. And we know that the leadership here is really committed to saying, yes, we want to actually move forward with this. We want to make, um, you know, have achievement towards the goals that we have laid out. And so our next steps here, most specifically about the plan, is that we're going to finalize um, incorporating the community input that we've received both tonight um, in terms of some of the questions that have come in and the comments that have come in. Thank you so much for those of you who have been um, adding comments into the Q&A. We really appreciate it. We haven't been reading all of those comments out, but we are noting them down. We'll be thinking about them and trying to figure out how we can incorporate that feedback into the plan. And we also have that online community survey open. And so that will be open until June 13th. So that's another area if you want to share, you know, some more specific detailed feedback, that would be a great place to do that. Or again, feel free to reach out to me via the email address I shared in the chat and I can um, pass those comments along as well. So we're going to be finalizing that piece, and then we're going to be bringing the plan back to the Board of Education on June 22nd for their review and hopeful approval at that point. And then after that, what happens is essentially, like I said, this plan outlines some very, very broad things that we want to accomplish in the next five years. And as some of you have noted, some of this stuff is really high level. So how do we actually get that down into the more specifics of what we're actually going to do? And so typically what happens um, is that you'll get that large plan and then the district will develop a single year work plan, an annual work plan. And they'll look at um, some of the elements that have come out of the strategic plan, some of the elements that have come out of the LCAP planning process as well as some of the other planning initiatives, come together, bring it together into a work plan and say, this is what we're actually hoping to accomplish in the next year, knowing that there's a full five years of work outlined in the strategic plan. So that's where we'll be going next in terms of developing that work plan and then actually beginning to get into some of this important work. So those are the next steps. And I believe, yep, that's, that's the majority of the information we have to share with you tonight. So like I said before, are there any other last questions? We'll keep the line open here a little bit longer, but if there are any questions, please do put them in the chat log here. I haven't seen any come in so far. Um, and I've shared out my email address as well. So that's another great way to connect if there's some things that you wanna get into in a little bit more depth and detail than we're able to cover in just our live Q and A. All right. Well, we'll hang on the line here for another minute. I don't see any other questions that have come in yet, but Tammy and I will stay on the line here um, probably through and for the next about five minutes here in case there are any other questions that come through. But apart from that, we really wanna offer a very big thank you to everyone who's joined us tonight, everyone who's asked questions, and especially those of you who shared comments. It's very, very helpful to hear this type of feedback directly. Um, we know that uh, this topic, you know, our, our students, our kids, this is something that's really, really important. And we know that we want to get it right. And so we appreciate everyone who's been able to join in and, and provide that feedback to us, both at this point and at other moments in this process. Thank you. Any other last comments or thoughts from any of our other panelists here? Great. All right. Well, with that, I'm going to stop sharing um, our presentation here. And like I said, we'll hang on the line for a couple more minutes in case there's any last questions. All right, we've hit 650 and no other questions have come in. So I think we can call it good for tonight. Thank you again for everyone who participated. Thank you so much to the CNUSD staff and leadership who joined us tonight. We really appreciate your time and we look forward to the next steps in this process. Okay, thank you everyone.
Thank you.